Okay, wonderful. This was a great uh, talk from Dr. Aldave, and uh, our next talk is going to be from uh, Professor TTL. Yeah, but good morning and good afternoon to all of you. Uh, let me share my presentation. Yeah, is my uh, slide visible? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Good evening, uh, Dr. Basak. I think uh, uh, I would uh, talk about uh, toric IVLs in the management of astigmatism in the uh, coronal astigmatism management. No relevant financial disclosure from my side. Uh, we all uh, we all know that if you have an astigmatism which is uh, a more than one diopter in cornea. And if patient also has a cataract, then that's a very good option for a, a treating uh, with uh, cataract surgery and intraocular lens implantation, that is toric intraocular lens implantation. We all know that uh, IOLs, especially toric IOLs, will give the most predictable results in correcting the astigmatism, especially the corneal astigmatism post uh, corneal procedures or patient having a little bit of a higher degree of cylinder. Because any other procedure, which may be suture adjustment or a arcuate keratotomies, may not be as predictable as intraocular lenses. Therefore, I think it is very important to, important to consider in those patients where patient is not actually having the difficult ocular surface, we can consider toric IVLs for correction of coronal astigmatism. The proper patient selection, that is, I think, most important uh, for us to give a, a good results in a post-op period. And that includes the biometry part as well as the good IOL power calculation for these patients. So just looking into the patient's uh, expectation, I think the single most important investigation in such cases for a making decision will be biometry. That is actually the keratometric power and the excellence for these patients. We all know that patients undergoing a refractive procedure, especially the refractive cataract surgery, one of the most significant uh, problem uh, which post-op patient faces is the residual astigmatism. The patient may not be very happy with the amount of cylinder they have to uh, wear, or it will decrease the outcome of a patient who undergone surgery as such because astigmatism per se will decrease the visual potential. So this is one patient who had cataract and had a high cylinder. You can see the biometry giving us more than 2.4 diopter cylinder, and which would be a regular cylinder can be corrected by toric ion per se. So any cylinder which is more than uh, one diopter should think of a toric ion if patient has some sort of cataract surgery. If you see, this is a difficult situation which uh, we'll see in a post keratoplasty patient post uh, ectasia procedures like patient uh, undergone DALP or a patient undergone some sort of uh, uh, cross-linking and has some cataract, then we can think of uh, implanting toric IVLs. Coronal ectasia is one factor where uh, we may not be able to correct the entire aberration induced by the cornea, but if we can implant the, the toric IVLs in these patients also would decrease the power of uh, requiring uh, for a subsequent glasses or a contact lens in these patients. And these patients would require the uh, much thorough counseling that they may not see clearly with intraocular lens implantation as such, may require a glasses or a contact lenses subsequently to cor correct the corneal aberration, which is difficult to correct with toric events. So this is one of uh, a patient who had undergone uh, uh, keratoplasty and subsequently the intraocular lens implantations. And uh, we did try to manage this with the, uh, the suture adjustment by uh, selective suture removal on the table. And if you have an interoperative keratoscopy, you can still manage the suture adjustment in these cases. In fact, this is a patient where you implanted the IOL, which is spherical IOL, and trying to adjust. So this can be one way of looking at these patients who develop cataracts subsequently within the first few months of uh, coronal transplant surgery, where you can't remove all the sutures. But the requirement for a patient undergoing cataract surgery would be stable keratometry. For that, you may have to require, require to remove all the sutures. 
which may be within a, a first one year after one year of surgery. Then wait for a four to six weeks after suture removal. Make sure cornea is uh, parameter stable. Then you calculate the IL power for these patients. So before uh, we jump for surgery, it is very important to us to understand patient's uh, need. And accordingly, we should counsel the patient for surgery, especially if you are doing an intraocular surgery intraocular surgery after corneal transplant surgery for these patients. The detailed ocular examination, especially looking for a tear film status, which is very important after corneal procedure, and look for a type of cataract, especially the grade of uh, cataract, the anterior uh, segment anatomy per se, the depth of anterior chamber, the peripheral antisynechia, glaucoma part may be important for these patients. Most patients would be on a chronic uh, topical medications. And if they have a glaucoma medication on, their surface will be definitely poor. So we have to stabilize the uh, surface, then think of uh, measuring the corneal parameters, which will give you a correct parameter for a IOL power calculation for these patients. The ocular surface management in these patients are very, very important. So we may uh, require the topography done, uh, especially the anterior curvature should be seen in these patients. In a difficult ectasia patients, sometimes, you may require to do a pentacam, which will give you a nice uh, EKR reading, which can be taken for a calculation of IL power for these patients. The biometry should be done at least in the two uh, uh, instrumentations, especially for a characteristic values. If the characteristic values axis wise they are matching in the two instrumentations, then that ca ca case can be a good candidate for a toric IL correction per se. And as far as excellence is concerned, that is uh, optical biometry will give you a better consideration. Some cases you may have to consider posterior corneal astigmatism also. That may also be uh, taken into consideration for an ultimate correction of these patients. IOL power has to be as per the toracity of the cornea and axis, and always look for a surgical induced astigmatism, especially in a post keratoplastic patient you may have a significant change in the corneal parameters if you have a larger surgical incision in these patients. We should do a small incision surgeries. If possible, uh, a femtosecond laser cataract surgery may be better for these patients. So to summarize the initial part, I think we require a cornea to be stable to have a regular astigmatism coming up. Multifocal IOLs may not be suitable post keratoplasty patient, but if patient has a regular astigmatism after the suture removal, uh, then we might consider uh, putting multifocal IL also in case the posterior segment is normal in these patients. And as I said, you need to have at least two uh, readings for two different instrumentation for keratometric power. If needed, we should use a topography or a tomography to get a good reading for these patients. Always use formulas which can give you uh, uh, assessment for inclusion of posterior corneal astigmatism, surgically induced astigmatism. AC depth and actually the affected lens position, and that might give you a good correction. Surgery wise, we all understand the proper axis uh, uh, measurement and the position and implantation lens in these cases. Manual or image guided system will be better. This is one of the video post uh, astigmatic uh, surgery where cornea had a, a six diopter cylinder with the astigmatism uh, induced by the pterygium which I had removed uh, six weeks before. And after, I think this is after three months of pterygium surgery, the patient again required that uh, toric lens implantation of T4. And if you have image guided surgery, that helps you in uh, giving a good uh, capsular axis. And the effective uh, management can be done of a nucleus if you have an intact axis in these patients. And it is very, very important to uh, do a surgery to safeguard your cornea and as well as the posterior capsule. Polishing of the both anterior and posterior capsule is important. And complete removal of viscoelastic from anterior and the posterior part of uh, uh, chamber is also important just underneath the eye well because the retained viscoelastic may be the cause for uh, post-op rotation of eye well. You can see this is axis uh, 121, uh, the axis of implantation, which will effectively manage in these cases. But in difficult cases, if you have access to an optic wave uh, analysis, aura, that can also be a good guide for uh, getting a good IOL power for difficult uh, corneal parameter cases, especially post radial keratotomy, post uh, LASIK surgeries, and post keratoplasty. Sometimes aura gives you a very nice interpretation of IOL power like this. 
And after implantation, you can actually make sure on the table that your lens is well positioned and the requirement of a rotation is not there and it gives you a right correction after you implant the eye also. So this patient is nicely done after the aura assessment. The aura may be a good assisting uh, system for a, a difficult keratometry case. So this is one of patient who had undergone keratoplasty uh, earlier and done a toric implantation, did very well. Image guided system will always be uh, better in terms of giving better visual quality than manual marking in these cases. This is our results of cases where image guided surgery did a better uh, post up uh, outcome in these patients. The marking uh, alignment may be sometimes difficult. Therefore, I understand uh, physical marking may be avoided in a post keratoplasty, post ecclesia patient. If you have image guided, you might get a better result. So this is one patient who had undergone the radial keratotomies. The corneal astigmatism was uh, significantly higher, but we could get a very nice anterior and posterior corneal curvature with iron master 700. Therefore, we are doing a toric implantation in this patient. Some patient, as I said, if they have a large ectasia, they still may require a contact lens after implantation eye So that part has to be explained to the patient. This is a uh, compression surgery. I'm going to implant toric uh, eye in this patient and patient did very well uh, post-op in this case. Sometimes the eye might rotate in these cases, especially a uh, ectasia patient where AC depth is uh, very big. You may have a retained viscoelastic and if vision is less than six by nine or uh, as per the outcome patient is not satisfactory and the axis is more than 10 degrees, you may require a re-rotation. These are various ways to assess the requirement of toric uh, realignment. You need to dilate the pupil see the new axis of uh, implantation of eyewear and the previous axis uh, has to be taken into consideration and you can rotate the lens according to a desired outcome for these patients. So this patient required a rotation of 74 degrees, had a more than three diopter cylinder post surgery, post uh, ictasia patient uh, where I did eyewear and after surgery, the rotation patient did a very well and it was right onto the uh, required axis and no rotation required. To summarize the uh, toric alignment part, I think, as I said, uh, you need to do a good assessment after dilatation. See the new axis of a lens and the pass axis and reflective error, residual reflective error has to be taken into consideration. Uh, always do a rotation within a first week uh, if you think it's because of uh, uh, malalignment, because of uh, some sort of a uh, misdirected uh, uh, axis. If you think it's because of uh, bag related problems, IOL sizing. In those cases, you may require to wait for three to four weeks, then rotate the lens in these cases. I think that covers uh, my talk on a uh, uh, toric eye will correcting the corneal astigmatism. Thank you for kindness. Of